I'm taking you for a walkthrough of the Austin RV3 Plus tent set up behind me here. Everything you see is included in the package. Let's check it out. Hit it. Hey folks, Ben from Snow is here. Today we're at the Brown Hill Creek Terrace Park. It's a beautiful day. We're by the river and I'm showing you the Oz10 RV3 Plus tent behind me here. We're going for a bit of a walk through. This is a really uh, a versatile tent for, um, for family camping or for uh, four-wheel drive touring. It comes with everything you see here with a peaked awning, the fly sheet, and there's also a few extras that we'll show over the top of the traditional RV range. We'll go through that shortly. I wanna start with the bag in front of me here though. This is uh, how big it is when it's packed. Um, it weighs actually about 26 kilos by my, by my measurements, uh, about two meters in length and about sort of 30, 30 centimeters in height, about 25 centimeters in depth. Now the fabric is the same eight ounce poly cotton canvas that Oz Tent have used in all their RV tents for, for a long time. So it's a good reliable fabric. It's got a 1500 millimeter waterhead rating. The frame is an aluminium frame. So the poles that we see under the awning here and also the frame that is inside the tent that we'll show you shortly. You can see it underneath here. That's all an aluminium frame. Mesh is a nice ultra fine mesh. I haven't got proof of whether it's actually midgy proof or not, but I'd say it's gonna be pretty close to being midgy proof. It's certainly mozzy proof. There's also a mesh door behind this one here that we'll show you shortly. And the floor is the same heavy duty PVC bucket floor that they've always used in their RV range. So no change with the fabrics there. It's still the good, reliable, heavy duty fabrics that Austin have always used. Moving on to the features of the awning here, and this is where some of the differences occur with the RV Plus to the standard RV range. Firstly, with the way this is sealed around the edge here, this is now a continuous zip that starts from the very bottom down here and runs right up around the edge, around the corner, and right up to the front of the awning here. So it gives it better protection from rain. It was the front, the awnings are always pretty weatherproof anyway on the RV tents. This just gives it a slight step up. There's a continuous skirt that runs right around here, continuous Velcro. There is a, a slight break here where it joins and also at the front here, there is a break there, but it does give better or upgraded weather protection right around the side of this awning here. There's also little orange caps that you get with your kit. These go over the top of the brass eyelet. It's the feature underneath here, just to stop the water from creeping in through the brass eyelet and creeping down this pole here. Used to only really occur in really heavy rain events, but once again, just that one slight step up with the RV Plus range. They've also added a second zip across the front of the awning here. So this means that you can use the accessories for the RV Plus range with a side wall, whereas traditionally or previously, there was just one zip that featured here. If you wanted to use an accessory with a front panel, you needed to use say an awning connector, which actually had the second zip on the awning connector. So it's now contained with the RV tent here. And the zippers both start on this side here. And the last thing, or second to last thing actually, that you'll find on the awning now are these little tabs that feature on the back here and also up both sides of the awning, they feature around here. Little elastic tabs that you could put your wiring for strip lights or actually mount your, your LED strip lights or bar lights in these so you can hold them up around the awning to, to light it up at night. And everything that you see with the awning is it's set up here now, which includes these 2.3 meter poles, the so 1.9 meter poles and both ridge poles all come with the RV Plus kit. So you get everything to set it up as you see it here. Before we step inside, we'll take a bit of a walk around the outside. So starting on the side of the tent here, you've got the same window here that's always featured on the RV range. This has got an internally adjustable panel on it. It is weatherproof, so it seems still at the bottom there. Show you a bit more on that when we step inside. And as we step around, you can see we've got the fly attached here. Now this fly sheet is included with the RV Plus kit. It's the same fly that you've always um, been able to buy as an accessory for the RV tents, now included with the RV Plus tent. That zips in along the top here with a storm flap over the top of the zip, so nice and weatherproof. This helps with uh, helps reduce heat inside the tent, also helps with condensation on really cold nights because the inner tent is a single skin tent. If you've got this on, it's gonna help the condensation build up on the fly instead of on the inner tent. Stepping around to the back of the tent here, we can see the fly sits down over the back and we've got the same window that we've always seen on the RV tent. So we can set this up completely zipped closed. If we wanted to unzip it, we've got a nice big overlap here between the waterproof fabric and the fly sheet, uh, and the, the mesh, sorry. And you can actually peg this out as a bit of a protected awning over the window if you like. Alternatively, roll it up. There's tabs at the top here to secure it up and out of the way. We've also got a few extra peg points at the base here with the RV Plus range just to pull this 
fabric up and away to create a little bit of extra space at the back of the tent here. Traditionally, these were they're quite sort of a, a small corner that you didn't have a lot of usable space in. These are always featured. These are an extra now, just to pull this out a little bit further to create that internal extra, extra internal space. Bit hard to see here right now, but there is a skylight also that features up underneath here. This is adjustable from the inside. It's gonna make more sense when I show you from the inside, but that gives us ventilation at the top of the tent. If we don't have the fly sheet on, it also allows us to stargaze at night while we're lying in the tent. Across the back of the tent, not much to see here. Three peg points and the fly sheet coming down over that window there. And then around to this side of the tent, same as we saw on the other side, we've got the fly sheet, which is coming out over the top of another window on this side here with an internally adjustable um, weather protected um, panel inside that we'll show you shortly. Now just touching on some dimensions before we jump inside the tent, this awning when it's set up with a peak like this is about 1.9 meters from this point here to this point here. If we level this out, drop this pole down and level it out, this can come out to two meters. So this bit of fabric here is two meters long. So you've got that extra space and it's 2.4 meters wide across the tent here. With regards to headspace, 1.9 meters at the front. These are extended as far as they'll go. 2.3 meters of height here. So you could actually hang a lantern or something in there with a bit of headspace if you like. And these are extended as far as they'll go as well. And that tapers back to 1.9 meters here. Let's now jump inside the tent and have a look. So on the front here, you've got canvas panels and underneath the canvas panel is a mesh panel. Now these just fold back. There's tabs here to secure this out of the way so that you can crawl in and out of the tent. You can do this on both sides. Same with the canvas or the mesh panel here. So those mesh doors we were talking about before. We zip that back and we can also secure that back and out the way there's another tab inside goes through the same loop inside then just fabric loops so nothing that can break on these nice and simple before we step right inside the tent i'll cover off on some of the features on the front here firstly the vents in the top of the door these are now internally adjustable vents there's little zips on the inside here so we can roll this up and secure it at the bottom here or just leave it hanging if you like for ventilation through the top of the door ventilation is really important in these tents particularly if you're not using the fly for condensation management and we can zip them closed again so we can do that while the tent is sealed up and if we just jump down to the bottom corner here, there is a power access point here, which teams up with these little tabs that feature inside, same as what we saw under the awning, that runs up the side of the tent here. And that just goes, allows us to get a, a cord inside the tent and give us 12 or 24 or 240 volt power in the tent to run lights or a fan, whatever we like. Okay, stepping inside, covering the features, we'll start at the base of the tent. The first thing I notice is there's no low level pockets. There used to be pockets on the RV tents that featured here and they kind of got, they disappeared down underneath where, where your mat was. So they're not there anymore. But if we work our way up the back here, we can see there's that window that we saw from the outside. We've actually now got these pockets up here. So this is like a little media pocket. You could put a, um, a tab or something in there if you like and watch your favorite show if you like, or just use it for storage. These are removable. There's a tab on the top here, Velcro tab, so you can take them off if you like. You don't have to use them. Then on the other side, same sort of thing, but just in the same eight ounce poly cotton canvas. Two pockets there, one on each side, so you can store gear in, up, and out of the way rather than down alongside your bag, or, uh, alongside your bedding where it can get lost. Around to the sides of the tent, we've got the windows. This is the internally adjustable storm flap that I mentioned before that we can open from the inside. We can roll that up if we like, or just leave it partially closed if we want high level uh, ventilation, but a bit of privacy down low. That also features on the other side here. So we've got another panel here, same window. So we've got ventilation on each side. We've got ventilation at the rear, ventilation up high. And then lastly, the piece of resistance with this guy here is the skylight in the top here. So this is a big mesh panel in the top here at the moment. We've got the canvas panel closed up, but I can unzip this from the inside. I can then reach out here, Velcro down at the back. There's a big Velcro strip along here for weather protection. So if we're not using the fly, this is still offering really good weather protection. We can unzip this on the sides there, do it both sides and we can roll it up and out of the way. And if we weren't using the fly sheet, this would now give us a night, a good view of the night sky. So that's secured up the top there now. This is the fly sheet. This is looking right outside the tent. So if we now zip this up, we've got tons of ventilation through the top of the tent with the fly sheet on. So we've got, if it was raining, or if it was cool, there's no issue with condensation in here because we're gonna get 
or the warm air is going to escape out there, condensation is going to appear on the fly sheet. If we have the fly sheet off, clear view of the sky so we can stargaze while we go to sleep at night. Just touching on dimensions inside the RV3 Plus here, 240 centimetres in width, two metres in depth. Now, it's slightly less than that. You need to take probably three to four centimetres off because the frame just sticks inside the tent a little bit. I have got a stretcher that I'm going to put in here to show you what, how much sort of space you'd be able to fit. They say it'll fit three. Probably would fit three if you just had a camp mat on the ground. But if you've got a stretcher, it gets a little bit tighter. I'll show you what I mean. And this probably looks a bit silly at the moment, but I just want to show you that um, it's a bit hard to fit a stretcher this way in the RV3 plus tent. This is about just under 220 centimetres in length and about a metre in width. So I've still probably got a good 20, almost 30 centimetres here that the stretcher would need to be shorter. We should make it about 180, 190 centimetre stretcher or probably about 190 centimetre stretcher. So you might just fit a really short stretcher in lengthways here, but it's going to touch against the end here like this one here does. Ideally, this is really enough room for a single stretcher to fit crossways in the tent even this is a little bit awkward to get in here and for now so you can see that will fit pretty comfortably across the back there now this is a big stretcher so you might just fit two stretches this way as well but you're not going to have a lot of space at each end of the tent to move around so probably could just fit two small stretches in here ideally i'd say stick with say two low level uh, self-inflating mats or air beds or if you want it's a great roomy shelter for one your dog and a bit of gear now with regards to what options are available for the rv plus and what connects to what because i was 10 rv tents are very modular most things work on this tent there's only a few exceptions um, the main one being the side panels the peak side panel kit that you get and the front panels for the rv plus are only for the rv plus they're not forwards or backwards compatible between rv tents and rv plus tents you need to make sure you buy the right side or front panels ground sheets are the same uh, same dimension so you can use the same ground sheet with these and um, the awning and caravan connectors all fit on here the only benefit you get is you get an extra zip so when you put an awning or a caravan connector the zip for the front wall that you would use when you were using the awning connector attached to the awning connector but you're now going to have a redundant zip essentially in there but these double zips mean you can use the a tarp extension which is an accessory for the rv plus tent plus a front wall here as well you can also attach that to a fox wing awning and you can still use a front wall on there too and the side awning the one that zipped on the side and came out this way that can't be used on the rv plus tents because this zip doesn't finish here the traditional rv tents had a single zip they finished here you attach the side awning on there and it came out you can't use that with this tent here but that's only a small amount of things that you can't do with the rv plus tent and it comes included with most of the extras you would buy to enhance your rv tent anyway so a really good option for tourists who want a little bit more than just the basic rv tent check out the rv plus this is the rv3 plus setup here a great tent for four wheel drive touring you can check them out online at snowies.com.au our lowest prices every day but if you've got any questions let us know down in the comments below subscribe to our channel for all of our latest information or check out some other videos like this one down here